This conference will now be recorded. Good morning. This is uh, Clueless A Trading Frank. Uh, it is approximately 10.36 a.m. on March 9, 2019. This is a uh, basic options training session uh, for uh, Mike, uh, BW uh, Outrage, a new member. Welcome. Uh, full disclosure, this is purely for financial education, not for any solicitation or advice. And session will be recorded, uh, uploaded to the Google YouTube channel on, on the Clueless A Trading for full access uh, for yourself and for anyone out there with the internet connection. Uh, this is a, uh, as mentioned, a basic um, introductory uh, options uh, um, training webinar. Uh, the part of the one, the first of the two complimentary sessions that are offered to all new members here at our service at Clueless A Trading. On that note, uh, let us begin. Mike, you're fully connected. Uh, you can see the screen in the back uh, as well as uh, hear the audio, correct? That is correct. Okay, very good. So let me start off. Uh, I, don't, I don't follow a script or anything, uh, uh, the, uh, so I'm just going to basically give you uh, the rundown right from the bottom up. So first of all, uh, before I even say anything, let me mention one thing to you. Options are risky business. Options are quantified risk uh, trading. Uh, and by uh, simply speaking, uh, your loss is maximized on the amount of money that you put in the option and your gains uh, on the options are limitless. A option bought at two, you can only lose $2. Uh, if, uh, but, the, but on the upside, uh, that thing can soar all the way up to wherever it goes. Um, can you just fix your mic a little bit? I, I hear some background feedback. Really? Um, okay, that's that that's better. Maybe because maybe your mic is too close to your. I can I can hear your breathing, so it must be. Oh, uh, is that right? Oh, okay, maybe I can turn it down. Can I turn it down? Or? Sure, you can turn it down. As long as you can hear me, that's fine. Okay, that's much better. Thank you, sir. How's that? Yeah, I just turned it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, li li little bit better. Are you on a headset or is it uh, is it um, a regular? Okay, that's better. Okay, it's better now. Uh, yeah, I guess you know some of the feedback noise is going to be there anyway. It's a little it little disruptive um, on my end because I hear I hear it like a like a wind tunnel type of effect coming through. Can you just adjust your headset a little bit? How's that? Is that doing me anything? That seems to be better for now. It's coming back again. Wow. Are you on a Are you on a headset or is it a plug-in uh, type of thing? No, it's, it's a plug-in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just for future purposes, try to get a basic headset. Uh, it's a lot easier. Uh, okay. Yeah. No. No problem. I'll, I'll do that. It's con conduct the session. It's like yeah, it's still it's it's still doing that. It's basically I can hear your test test. I hear you. Yeah, very clearly. It's just coming through. All right. So bottom line is, let me just, let's just read off uh, from the basics. So so like I said, options are risk business. So uh, and I call it quantified gambling. Uh, the returns are enormous, uh, and the risk is limited to whatever you put in there. An option is derivative of the underlying asset, which is the stock. So um, it, it, let's say, for example, Apple. So here, if you have Apple at uh, $200 uh, or $170, or so whatever the case may be, and um, you instead of buying a thousand shares, uh, which would cost you $170,000, uh, you can buy 10 contracts, and each contract is you're controlling a hundred shares of the stock. That's the basic part. Uh, gotcha. You you are ba you can capitalize on the movement on the stock. If you have a thousand shares of stock on Apple, you'd have to deploy one hundred and seventy thousand um, dollars in, in, into the market. And for every, let's say, it, it moves up uh, uh, two points. So on two points, you make two thousand uh, dollars. Yet at the same time on the actual option itself, uh, you could deploy 
an Apple option, for example, is I'm giving I'll give you an example of the Apple 175 option. They cost a dollar, so you can buy you can buy 20 contracts, which would be two thousand dollars. And I'm going to put this down here. Let me change this color. Okay, so one contract. I'm just going to put C. You are controlling a hundred hundred shares of the stock. Okay. Oh, yeah, just one second. Hundred shares of the stock. So um, if you buy twenty contracts at let's say a dollar, you are deploying two thousand dollars. That's your maximum risk. Two thousand dollars. You are controlling two thousand shares of the stock. Right. One second. I'm going to put two thousand S. Two thousand shares of the stock, which approximates if Apple is trading at hundred and seventy-five dollars, which is roughly it's hundred and seventy-three right now. So Apple. Okay, so you're basically controlling three hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of stock. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So that's two thousand shares. Yeah, that's a lot of stock. Instead, you are deploying only two thousand dollars to control three hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of stock. If Apple goes to hundred and eighty, yes. If Apple goes to hundred and eighty, and this is these are real life examples. Apple goes to hundred and eighty. Which has happened yes. a lot. Uh, then your contracts, on average, should go to around three to four dollars. Just give you an estimation. So you are basically netting. So you're ba you're you're up roughly three hundred to four hundred percent. Sorry, 400, running out of space. Yeah, 300, 400% on your money, and that $1 call that you paid a dollar will be roughly three to four dollars, and you will net yourself a profit of two, uh, of two to three dollars. Your profit is, I'm gonna put profit. Let's say two dollars. Yeah, let's say two dollars. So on two dollars, you have twenty contracts. So you made fifty grand. No, you're completely wrong. Twenty contracts, two dollars means you made four grand. Four okay, grand. that's oh, four thousand. Yeah, four yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm, 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 so, I'm sorry. Uh, to, uh, six thousand. You know, you six thousand. Yeah, you, you. The, it goes to. Twenty times three is six thousand. Yes. Uh, you yes. put in two. You put in two thousand. So your yes. net profit, your net profit is four thousand bucks. Gotcha. Okay. So, so you, for for so the uh, so for a better choice of words, you are put you are uh, putting in a fraction of the money versus buying the stock, and and you are netting yourself a decent profit. As, as long as your directional bet on the stock uh, is uh, is correct, all right. Now, if everything goes wrong and the market goes through one of these intermittent flash crashes, then You're your maximum your maximum loss is capped at two thousand. Okay. I'm okay. There. Also, keep I'm in there. mind that at any given time, you don't need to sit there and lose your money. You can bail out. And cover uh, and and recoup. Let's say you're down 50% on it, which options move quite volatile. Uh, then uh, you can say, okay, I do not want to lose more than 50% of my money. Uh, uh, I'll, I can re-enter at, at a later time. Then at that point, you can basically sell and um, and and at uh, sell and and take your minimal loss uh, and and uh, re sit back and re-enter at a given time. Okay, so. so the Go ahead. go ahead. No, no, go so ahead. So in, in December, uh, when the uh, market took a, uh, a dive, yes. I didn't close. 
I didn't close any of my uh, positions. You okay, know, go I, ahead. I left my Bank of America. I, I left everything. But oh, I, uh -huh. I'm, looking, I'm looking at my portfolio and I'm down like forty grand. Yes. <laughs> and um, I mean, I did buy the uh, the futures uh, the first week of January. Yes. To, um, to make up for it, but yes. um, I didn't. Need this, I didn't need to sit there and watch it go down every day. So that's was this is the basis for my um, okay uh, okay my so here. no no understood and that's going to be the second part of the thing and that's going to be in the second session where we're going to discuss some of the strategies that you can use so let's go through so now that we have that out of the way the basic stuff uh, let's go through what the actual definition of it this is a very helpful site you should certainly uh, uh, tag it anything to do with finance or investments whether it be options or stocks Investopedia is basically the Wikipedia of anything to do with finance. They've come a long way, and every aspect of finance is covered in, uh, on Investopedia. So very, very important that you tag this and use it as a reference and a resource for um, anything that you'd like to know about uh, uh, about financial trading, assets, anything like that. Okay. Uh, okay. So, he so here we have the option section under Investopedia futures which you already know so given the fact that you actually trade futures options are nothing but the same thing as futures because when you trade futures you are actually buying options on those futures contract you're buying futures contracts you understand what I'm saying so it's the same philosophy so saying all that um, first and foremost one has to realize just like futures too is that uh, there is limited risk and unlimited potential on the upside they are extremely volatile that's just the nature of the business and the volatility in the market, which is certainly enhanced, start you know has always been there, but uh, starting in 2018, it has been elevated. The movements are large in the market, so options and yes. futures traders, as you can see, the fluctuations are large. Um, yes. Yes, there tell. are, there are. Yes. Uh, let me finish. The most yes. important thing about options trading that I've found over my years of doing it um, is the fact that it is not always where you get in. It's the actual management of that trade is what matters. And that is something that one can teach, but the only way that you can basically learn how to do it is by physically doing it. Everyone has their own style. Everyone has their own risk parameters. Everyone has their mental and emotional parameters on how they operate in a volatile market. We try to do it in the form of, of, of strictly, strictly focusing on the tactical charts which you will at your own time review on the on the real time Twitter feed. Uh, they are extremely precise. They are marked to a very high degree of accuracy where the where the where the uh, supports are, where the resistance is, um, what the possibilities are, and stuff like that. Volatility in its essence is unquantifiable. It is it is meant the word volatility simply means that it's 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 going to move back and forth rather quickly. But we strictly follow our charts. To get an understanding whether we should bail uh, when we are down or should we add on there and those are more advanced stuff that we teach on a trade management basis on the advanced coaching sessions where we need to dollar cost average you buy an option at two bucks if it goes down to a dollar do we buy more and bring our cost down or do we bail at that point and all that is directly tied in with the uh, chart setups that I that I uh, constantly uh, publish for my members so they can decide what or what they need to do and of course I put in my my uh, alerts and my uh, tactical guidance on what they should do but the the, the final uh, the final decision always lies with you what you want to do what we do find in, in volatile markets what we do find the volatile markets is that because of the volatility if something is down and we feel uh, based on the charts that it's going to bounce from there we will add more at those levels and then we as the market surges forward case in point was Friday markets were down about 300 points and then ended the day almost positive I called it to the teeth go through my Twitter feed you'll see that and okay. it was a huge huge day for for people who uh, 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 who were alerted bought bought at the lows or close to the lows based on my alerts and my charts and then they and by the end of the day they could have taken out a substantial amount of money whether it be 60 percent 70 percent 100 percent and some of the stocks that we traded um, went ballistic 
Okay. Okay. So uh, and the, and and that is a function of the volatility in the market. So so just giving you you know so the trade management style that is something that we teach in the advanced coaching sessions. Actual real examples of how to do it and um, and and as uh, and and if one can ma- master that and it's a constant learning process, but one can master a uh, part of that, then they will come out well ahead of the game in most of their trades. In trading, there's a very simple rule. If you win 60 to 70% of the time, then you are well ahead of the game uh, than anyone else out there. And that's really what it is. So uh, so this this particular uh, site that we're looking at in Investopedia, um, it explains to you the basics of what options are. Options trading involves certain risk. Investors must be aware. Now we already know that. Um, it is a derivative, means that the price, one second. The word is of excessive risk taking, derivatives. That's really for the common person out there who doesn't quite understand. Derivatives inherently are not risky. Derivatives inherently, just like an option or a futures contract, is a hedge against the market. You can go long, you can go short. Um, a, the, the price is dependent on derived from the price of something else. Um, so that's that's bottom line. So derivatives of financial securities, their value depends on the price of some other asset. That's common sense. Every option has an underlying asset, whether it be a stock or whether it be a market indices. As a, as a, as a futures traders, you understand that clearly. I'm assuming that from a futures trading standpoint, you primarily trade the S&P futures. Uh, the uh, the Nasdaq, the NQ, the NQ. Okay, so um, so that's fine. So the okay. underlying base, yeah. basis yeah. is the Nasdaq Nasdaq indices, and the NQ is basically the Nasdaq 100. So you the un, the the true underlying asset are the prices of the stocks within that index. Yes, and, yes, I'm there. yes. So so yeah, just just covering the basics. Now let's get to the to the. Uh, Bottom line, this all should come normally to you as a futures trader. There are two types of options. There are call options where you're betting on the upside, and there are put yeah, options I, where you're betting on I, the downside. It's a correct. I reviewed, I reviewed some of the uh, websites last night. Yeah, no, but as a futures trader, you know when you're buying yes. uh, when you're buying Nasdaq options, you obviously you know uh, from what I can understand, you bought the call options based on the fact that you know there would be uh, there would be an upside move on that. Correct? Correct. Or you or okay. Correct. So there you go. So there's a call option and there's a put option. So think of a call option as a down payment for a future purpose. You're basically placing a uh, a binary bet that it is going to go higher. So let's look at an example. So this gives you a basic basic example. A potential homeowner sees a new development going up, uh, may want to purchase a right. Uh, a, a person may want a right to purchase a home in the future, and that's really what an option is. A option is a right. To uh, uh, to to uh, purchase the underlying common stock. Now you don't necessarily need to take delivery of the underlying stock. In which case you'll have to come up with the money. When you buy one contract of Apple, you are controlling a hundred shares. If you hold the options to full expiration and you are above your strike price, let's say Apple, you bet that it's going to go to 180 and the stock is at 181. Your options are substantially higher. You will be automatically exercised. In other words, they, the the Chicago Board of Options Exchange or the Philadelphia Options Exchange will deliver the stock to you. So you better so have. I, yeah. So, so, so if, well, let me finish. Let me finish my thought. So you better have the cash to take delivery. Like we don't do that. We trade options. So we will sell it prior to the delivery. We will not hold it, and we will exercise our right to sell that option at a higher price and book in the profits instead of taking delivery of the stock. It's really as simple as that. Go okay, ahead with your I, question. Yes. So I bought, I, uh, let's say, um, I, you said Apple's trading at 173. So I bought the 175 uh, call. Mm-hmm. And, and in one month, it's now gone to uh, 180. Mm-hmm. And I have not closed my position. So I have to pay. Correct. Correct. They will. They will. They they will deliver the stock to you. They will deliver the stock to you, and you gotta come up with the money in order to take delivery of that stock. So at 180, you would have to come with. Let's say you have uh, 100 contracts. I mean, uh, 10 contracts. 
So you are controlling a, a thousand shares of stock. So you would have to come up with one hundred eighty thousand dollars in order to take delivery of the stock. Now, if they do deliver the stock to you, you can immediately sell it. Uh, you don't, you know, and and then capture that five dollar profit. You know that you uh, have. Okay. Yeah. That. I mean, I, I mean, that's what I'm trying to figure out here. I mean, yeah, but I, you don't, but, let, but let me let me stop you there. You don't need to go there. You do not need to take delivery of the stock. Okay, oh, okay. I have very seldom uh, uh, ever taken a delivery of the stock. You will basically exercise your call by selling it and taking that nice profit that oh, is on, on, profit. on uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah see, because if the stock if the stock goes from stock goes up five bucks, your options that you bought at an average cost of let's say a dollar. Um, Will be worth maybe uh, 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 maybe four bucks. Okay, uh, okay so okay, so you will be taking yeah you will be taking a three hundred percent profit either along the way or close to that hundred and eighty dollar price. So let's move on. Next thing is the premium. It is the price of the option contract. So the way it works, call option basics. Okay, it's a put option nothing. Okay, uh, so the premium. Now there are two. Let me connect a. Let me connect something here that I can. I'm going to connect my uh, my visual writing board so I can basically write some things here instead of using my mouse to. Right, bear with me one second. Give me a minute. Sure, take your time. So why would anyone want to take delivery if they had to come up with that kind of money at one time? Um, I don't know. Um. Some people, uh, you know, that's a good question. Uh, maybe because I don't know, to be honest with you, I can't answer that question. But uh, I'm sure if you're a large institutional trader, options are not just for individual traders. If you're a large institutional trader, you might want to take delivery of the stock and hold it. Um, you know what I'm saying? So that's that is completely a. There, 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 there are different strategies that are used by institutional traders, and 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 a hundred and eighty thousand bucks is on a on a multi multi million dollar or a billion dollar portfolio is uh, is nothing. So that would probably be the answer answer to that question. Okay, bear with me one second. I'm setting this up here, and we are, I think, good to go. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's see. All right. That's better. So, I, what is this program called? That's a good thing. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it is basically um, a drawing tablet, and okay. it allows me to. Okay. Okay. There you go. Much better. All right. So when it comes to a option, there are two components to an option. One is, and you already know this, one is the time value. And the intrinsic value. And I explain to you exactly what it is. The time value is your expiration date. So let's say we're talking about Apple here. So in the case of Apple, let's say we are making a short-term bet one week, all right, based on event catalysts. Because nowadays there are weekly options and there are monthly options. We play both, okay. all right? So weekly options, big event coming up, let's say, Realistically speaking, next week is 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 the uh, is the uh, options expire on the third week of each month, third Friday of each month. Uh, yes. There are some, you know, there is a, a lot of hope about the U.S.-China trade deal and everything like that. So let's say some sort of good news comes out. Uh, so we let we are betting 
uh, so this is a short term option play. So seven days. So that would bring us into March 15th. Okay. So you, you have seven days from this past Friday. So that's your time value, how many days you have left. All right. So the time value, the intrinsic value is the price of the underlying stock. All right. So these two things are calculated in the form of what they call option Greeks, which are delta, gamma, uh, yes, and they, they, okay. I don't necessarily, yeah. So I don't, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that on the next session. And the bottom line is um, they are, they measure the volatility, the underlying volatility, what you might expect to get. These are all done on a very computerized basis. In the old days, uh, the, the market makers on the Chicago Board of Options Exchange, uh, uh, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, you know, they used to basically do it by hand. Now it's fully automated uh, and they have a certain idea that what will be the volatility or implied volatility, I should say, that's what they say, the measured volatility of what those options will be if the stock price goes to that level. So the higher the implied volatility means that your overall risk return basis is also higher. If it goes in the right direction, your returns are going to be outsized. If it goes in the wrong directions, uh, wrong direction uh, against your bet, let's say you have a call, then obviously your risk is going to be maximized and you'll be going towards uh, your... The higher, higher implied volatility, it will be Correct. the higher... The, the now, the impli the now, the implied volatility is also, is not just uh, specific to options. It is uh, specific to individual stocks too. All right. And I'm going to show you uh, on the next session uh, that you can actually look on, at least in my case, the Thinkorswim platform, TD Ameritrade, and it gives you an idea of the implied volatility of what might, uh, you know, what the returns can be, plus minus 30 percent, 40 percent. The uh, stocks which are fast moving stocks, every stock has its own char uh, inherent characteristic. Uh, some are high beta momentum stocks like the Teslas, like the Googles, the Amazons. They tend to fluctuate a lot more. Um, just giving you a small example. So obviously their implied volatility is going to be higher than a Walmart or a Costco or a uh, or, or, or a boring stock. OK, so that's it's just it's just the nature of the beast. Each of each has, has their own characteristic high beta momentum stocks. That's what we call them. Those are the fast, generally tech stocks and biotech stocks and then the utilities and the bank of americas and uh, and and the uh exxons that you have those are low beta low beta uh yeah, they're not, they're not gonna fluctuate that much yeah. that's right exactly so talking about the most important thing to keep in mind the time value and the intrinsic value so if the stock stays the same we're talking about apple here so okay. if the stock you bought it at 170 and the stock basically is stuck around 170 give or take then your intrinsic value is stagnant all right Correct. it is it is not moving as you're moving as you're moving towards expiration on the 15 and the stock is remaining the same the time value is falling yes. fast your you, so your actual option price premium will start to decay or it starts to basically erode lower, okay? And right. and uh, you need to see movement in the stock in order for the overall value of the option to rise. Correct. It's really simple. So if right. the stock is moving fast and furious, then your time value, let's say you are two days into the game, let's say you are on, on uh, uh, looking at a date here, let's say you are into Wednesday, which is uh, the twentieth? I'm sorry. This is uh, why am I saying three fifteen? Yeah, three fifteen, not twentieth. Let's say you are in, into the tw uh, into the thirteenth, which is a Wednesday. Yep. Okay. Um, and your overall stock price has barely budged. Let's say it's you know it's sitting somewhere around one seventy one, 
your time value is decaying faster than your intrinsic value rising. So in that case, that? where can you um, see that? You, you, you can see that you see that in the price of the option. Okay. Yeah, okay. you can see the price of the option. Uh, that that's what's happening. You make, um, you make a determination if there's two days left. You need maybe you need yeah, to get so out. Yeah, so you need you need to basically make it out. Here is the here is the million dollar question. Just because it's decaying a little bit, but then a big event happens on Thursday, whether it be a, whether it be an economic number, whether it be a big exactly. piece of piece of news coming out of the technology industry. Uh, whether right. Apple announcing a new phone, anything like that, you the, the intrinsic value will jump hard. The stock will shoot harder, despite the fact that your time value is decaying. Your so actual option will move. Sure. So there, well, let me finish. So there is no exact mathematical signs, but rule of the thumb is as you are getting close to your expiration date, which in this case is next Friday, you might need to basically roll over your options, take whatever you have there, roll them out to the following week, which would be options expire every Friday, at least uh, uh, stock options. Uh, you will basically uh, you will basically move it out uh, to you will move it out to the twenty second. Um, that all depends on and th like I said, this is a this is a uh, correlation between what is happening in the market. It's a correlation of what's what uh, uh, the charts are telling us. Uh, so even though the stock might be, let me finish. Let, the, so stocks are telling us that's the reason why we gave almost 190% plus weighting on the structured charts that I put out there. Because regardless of the volatility in the market and such, even if the stock is moving sideways, it doesn't mean that you're not going to make money. If we are starting to see internal indicators, and these all come, the, 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 these I teach in, in, the, in the intensive advanced coaching sessions, this is serious business. Um, after all, it is serious business because I'm a professional trader. This is my living, and I tend to do quite well doing it. So the bottom line is then I will basically go out there and roll those options out following week buying more time, uh, giving it more time for that stock to basically, if the internals are indicating the right way, that there is a high degree of a high degree of uh, uh, probability that the stock is going to go towards the 175, 180 level, and I will basically buy more time by pushing it out. Yeah, go ahead with your question. Now, um, we'll just use your example here. Yes. So I bought, I bought the, uh, let's just say I bought the, uh, Hundred shares, right? So um, one, you con one, one, con one contract, yeah, one contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one contract, <clears throat> and it expires on um, uh, the fifteenth, as you uh, as you mentioned. Yes, yes, every Friday. Want, yeah, so I want to uh, extend, as you suggest, because there's mm -hmm. going to be a development. Yes. What happened to my original purchase? Um, the cost of that, and then how do I? How does that um, tie in with the extension? I mean, how, okay. How, you know. Yeah, that's that's a that's a good question. So you have one contract. Yes. One call. Correct. And we're talking about Apple here. So you have Correct. one call, and you paid a dollar for it. Okay. Okay. So you would sell it. I paid uh, uh, one dollar okay. or hundred dollar. No, you bought you bought one call at a dollar. Okay. So basically, you paid a hundred dollars. Okay, I pay hundred. Okay. okay. So let's say it is uh, you would sell that, and it's let's say let's say approximate that it's still stuck at one. All right, and uh, sure. so you would you would sell the hundred dollars, and then you would use that to buy one call of the this is uh, this is expiring three fifteen, and you want to extend it out would be what's called a rollover. You're okay. rolling, rolling out um, 322. Now keep in mind, and I'm going to put this in simple terms. You pay an extra premium. 
to buy time. Okay, obviously, you know nothing's free in life. So you're extending it out, you're buying more time, so that one dollar call, one call that you sold, um, you would have to pay more. It might cost you a dollar twenty-five. That extra twenty-five cents is basically the cost of buying more time. Gotcha. The longer okay. you go, so let me finish. The longer you go out in time. the more you pay okay so if you buy something let's say uh, if you buy something three months out then you would obviously have to pay a higher premium because you're buying a lot of time for a lot of things to happen during that time the more you pay okay clear. now the same thing applies um, so you're clear on that so the same thing applies we're talking about Apple with strike price apples let's say trading for sake of this discussion at 170 if you buy an option exactly at 170 you are buying what they call ITM or in you are buying in the money or at the money okay so you are basically buying you buying the 170 calls the apples at 170 and you bought a strike price you understand strike price strike price of 170 yeah. and uh, and that is uh, that is going to cost you um, roughly two bucks okay. if you buy if you buy your betting that the stock will go to 175 then your cost most probably will be a dollar so out of the money what we call OTM okay out of the money will cost less cost less all right now what is the what is the simplest uh, uh, what are the consequences of that the consequences of that the results of that I should say when you buy in the money and you can buy below the money too in the money suggests that you can buy Apple 165 calls also which are five dollars in the money you understand what I'm saying? You don't need to buy the 170, you know. So, yeah, 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 so yeah. it just costs a lot more. <laughs> there's a there's a lot of static coming in. What you say? Static. Yeah, it that that's fine. There was some static in there. What, what was your what was your question? Uh, so if you're buying uh, in the money, it's going to cost you um, more uh, at 165. Right? It's going to it's going to cost you more. Uh, the, from a, a simple pay, a back of the napkin calculation means it might cost you five dollars because you are buying five dollars worth of safety. That's the thing I want right. to explain explain to you. Hold on for one second. Hold on. That was a junk phone call from Bank of America speaking in Chinese. So you go figure. Okay. Uh, that's, that's the beauty about Apple Apple iPhones. I constantly keep on blocking this bullshit calls. There's a lot more coming in. All right. Let me let's focus on this. So um, so in the money, common sense says you are buying. You're paying more for safety. Now right. safety, or, or you you have more of a buffer. Now you're paying more for safety. In the in the world of options, basically you're taking in lesser risk, and 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 so basically they will move literally dollar to dollar with the stock. So if the stock is at 170 and the stock goes to 172, then then your options will add two dollars to itself and it'll be three. You got it. Mm -hmm. Now, this all, all also has to do with the implied volatility, which takes into account the three components, the, L, the gamma, theta, uh, and uh, those are the two, two components, actually. Uh, the gamma, oh, delta. Delta is basically the implied volatility on that. All right, I'm going to show that to you quickly before, before we end our session. So the, if, the, if the delta is higher, then the underlying asset 
is going to move underlying option is going to move a lot faster so you're paying for safety you're moving dollar to dollar now if the stock is moving slowly then you will be moving dollar to dollar and if it slides backwards you will be basically losing less because you have bought at the money okay right you're you're in at 165 so Okay, so this is this is more, this is you pay a little bit more for a little bit more of a buffer. Now, if the stock jettisons to 175 real fast on some sort of positive catalyst, and here is how options work: these things will go from a dollar to five dollars, right? Mm -hmm. But the but the with the the out of the money calls, which you have the 175s. Um, no, uh, you paid safety. We said the strike price was two. Oh, one, it moves dollar to dollar. Uh, so you paid two. So this will be not three dollars. This will be actually five dollars because we said you paid more for for the safety, right? So this Correct. this will be five dollars. So if it goes to one seventy five, you'll be adding five dollars to it. So you, your option price will be actually seven. All right, from yes. uh, from the from the original two dollar level so you will be up roughly 350 percent your net profit will be 250 always remember you 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 know if if, if two if, if two dollar option goes to four if the two dollar option goes to four uh, uh let's say it goes to six you actually took in 200 percent in profit even though your option is up 300 percent because you initially had to put down the base capital of 200 dollars. you got it understood Oh yeah, just simple math. If something goes from you know, uh, if 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 something goes from two to six, that's a three bagger, that's up three hundred percent, net net. But your but your net profit is two hundred percent because your original outlay was two hundred dollars. Got it? Yes, I understand. Okay, good. So you'd be surprised how many traders still don't get that, you know. So, uh, so uh, okay, coming back to this. So if the stock jettisons to one seventy five. Then the cheaper options that you paid a dollar mm -hmm. will. One sec. The cheap here you made yourself. Uh, this one is up three hundred and fifty percent. All right, three hundred and fifty percent. The one that you pay two dollars. This one will be up. Will be moving because of the implied volatility because it happened so fast, so quick. It happens quite a bit in this type of market. So I'll give you some real life examples today. Um, so this will be up to five plus dollars. So that is that means you you basically got a five hundred percent instead of a three hundred percent move. So the out of the money calls at one seventy five tend to give you a higher ROI or rate of return rate uh, return on investment ROI than the ones which are the safety yeah. ones and that so so that's up to somebody to decide now on the uh, the reality do you, do of our, you suggest, do you suggest uh, that in your um, I I, I said yes in my in my I need you to go through my Twitter feed over the weekend sure. you will see that I suggest you you're absolutely correct I suggest uh, the options that I would be buying and I am buying some of them will be out of the money some of them will be in the money uh, yes I suggest the strike price I suggest okay. the I suggest the uh, uh, the the, uh, the date the option strike price uh, the options mm -hmm. expiration date um, and I also suggest uh, whether or not, you know I always like to scale into my options so yes I, I suggest that I also do show what my level of on my charts I'm very clear with my level of where I'm looking to sell them um, and uh, so people can make a determination whether they want to hold to that level. Given the volatility in the market, my accuracy rate on my charts are very, very good, very high accuracy rate. But along the way, the volatility can can derail you. So that where the, that's where the real essence of the trade management comes in. Yes. OK. Yeah. I mean, if I say something's going to go here to there based on what I'm seeing on my charts, I would say a good 70 to 80 percent of the time it hits exactly that and overshoots however along the way it takes a curvy route what we call intraday volatility and that that's intraday yeah, let me finish let me finish let me finish, let me finish, let me finish my thought that you're you know you need to get a headset believe me this thing is terrible i get a lot of feedback so that intraday volatility is what throws the average retail trader off 
and I try to keep people on track as much as possible. And the ones who do keep in ta- track tend to make the most money than the ones who are basically emotionally involved with and, and they, it, they, they're they bailing out because, you know, it's down 30 percent because of the intraday volatility, the sudden soup down. Uh, and Friday was a prime example. Markets opened substantially lower, went lower, tested the levels that I said it was going to test exactly to the teeth. Um, and I want you to go through my Twitter feed. It's all there. You know, you can't get any more accurate than what I put out there. And that's the essence. You know, look, a trader is ma- not made. Uh, or, or when everyone's a genius, like they say uh, on Wall Street, everyone's a genius when the markets are going one way higher. Okay, the real trader has to deal with adverse situations, such as Friday, giving you one example, where the markets are down 300 points. Looking, it's you know the price is looking like, oh my God, look at this! It's just blood red, falling, falling, falling. Yet we had multiple winners uh, on selective stocks, which had which were moving against the market higher. Tesla was one example. Um, and then a couple of other stocks. It's all in my Twitter feed. And on top of that, the level that I posted on the S&P 500, again, I repeat, on the Twitter feed, you can see that in clear visual uh, pictures, okay. uh, chart. It, it, it hit there and it bounced exactly off that and it retested it. It was a gap fill of the S&P 500 at approximately, at approximately uh, 2722 on the E-minis around 2720, 2721. My charts clearly showed that the internals were showing there was going to be a bounce and then the market bounced like a monster starting at 3 p.m. and almost went positive. So uh, when we are trading options, we are following our charts like no one's business. The discipline of technical trading is one of the hardest disciplines you'll master. But once you start to feel it and the only way you feel it is by making money off it then you become a complete believer. I'm a complete believer of, of, of technical charts with a full res, uh, with full respect to the fundamental backdrop of what is the, you know, of, of price action as well as, you know, what the macro news is and things like that. But the charts, like the old saying on Wall Street, charts don't lie, traders do. So uh, what was your question? Uh, when were these uh, uh, entries made? On uh, Friday, you mentioned Tesla. Was that like, I, that like I said, we don't have. Let, let, let me let me stop you. That is your job to go through my Twitter feed with a fine tooth comb. It's all there, shown clearly, commented clearly. You need to spend a good solid hour going through it, and all the questions you're asking on that front is all there. Okay, so that's okay. that's it. Because I can't sit here and explain to you. We did multiple trades. Tesla was strong to start with. Uh, then it went dipped a little bit in the red, and then uh, you know, I mean, I my charts were pretty clear that Tesla has a limited amount of bounce left on this. I don't give two hoots about Tesla. I don't love any stock or hate any stock. You know, that's another thing I teach my traders. Stocks are just, you know, you rent them, uh, you own, you know, you don't, you don't fall in love with them. Of course, as an emotional base, if you made money on on a particular stock, uh, on options or or stock or or, or the common. We call you know stock. We call it common stock. We just call it common. Then obviously you have an affinity for it. But aside from that, you don't care. So in the case of Tesla, I see the stock going to around you know uh, uh, two ninety five, three hundred bucks, very fast, very quick. They're just opening the Shanghai plant. Uh, the news was uh, I had I had uh, put out the news the night before or or, uh, or early in the morning. Uh, the the media did not report it till late afternoon. All right. This is the power of what, what we do here at Clueless A Trading. I put it out there almost 24 hours earlier. That's a huge piece of news. They're going to be making the Model 3s there. They don't have to pay tariffs because they're not going to be imported from uh, uh, from the U.S. Um, they got the financing from China Construction Bank. These are big things. So that's the fundamental analysis part of my business that I try to help people with. You know, um, And the technical chart showed that 270 was a very powerful level. That's where we had entered the stock prior to this. And in the case of Tesla that, you know, that you ask, I actually bought the calls way out of the money. Okay, so the stock trading at, at that time around 280, mm-hmm. um, 285, and we originally bought it at 270. I bought the strikes at 295. So somebody said, wow, you expect it to go up like $15, $20? And I said, yes, because that's how Tesla moves. When Tesla falls, it falls 15, 20 bucks. 
when it moves higher, my charts are pretty clear. And you will see that clearly on the Twitter feed that I do expect the stock to head towards there. Now, that brings me to a very, very important point on options trading. Let's say you buy a strike on any stock. We are talking about Tesla in this point. Okay. Stock, let's say the stock's trading at around 285 and current price, 285. You buy a strike at 290, 295. Expiring, you know, I'm just giving an example. Let's say expiring on next Friday. So um, the fact is that the, the and, and let's say you paid uh, $4 for the option. The stock does not have to hit 290 or 295 in order for you to make money. So that's a misnomer or a misunderstanding a lot of basic option traders have. They, they feel that if it doesn't hit the strike price, then their options, they're going to lose money on the options. No, as the stock is moving towards this price, 287, 288, your right. options will be moving fast yeah. and fu furious, okay? So the key is that you don't necessarily need to hold to 295. As long as it's moving in that general direction, as long as my charts are pointing in that direction based on the way I set it up, and you'll see that very clearly on the on the real-time Twitter feed, on multiple stocks, not just on Tesla, then you are, yeah. you're, you, you are going to make money. Now, here is another point. Let me finish my thought. I tend to take staggered profits. So, and so I, if I have, let's say, 10 contracts, so I have 10 contracts, so that cost me $4,000 on that trade, all right? And as the stock is moving, I will be taking profits along the way as it's moving towards my destination. If I start to see a sudden turn in the market, I will basically cap my profits and get out, out, out of 10 contracts. I might sell eight and just leave two, holding two contracts in the book. Got it? So I, don't, yeah. I, I, I take staggered profits. That's just my discipline of doing things. Now, if I have two contracts, then obviously I say, okay, I can handle my risk. I will let it go and fly with the wind because at that point, I, I know that um, even if I slip backwards, I'm not going to be hurt too much. I got you. So go ahead with your question. Okay, so now my question. Let's just use some Tesla. Yes. Um, you basically have to look at the uh, uh, the stock, or correct me if I'm wrong. Basically, you have to look at the stock. Uh, have, to, have, have to look at the stock chart that I put out there, absolutely. And understand where maybe the support is. Yeah, know, so uh, let me let me show you Tesla, and, the, uh, and let, let's let's talk real world right now. So... Uh, can I finish? Me, yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, will the... Um, the uh, option price change on on the uh, intraday, on the um, price of uh, uh, absolute of, of Tesla. So we have to kind of get a, a a good maybe one hour or two hour or four hour support level. We don't want to buy at an extreme level, right? Okay. App, you're absolutely correct. Uh, what you said is probably one of the most important things that you basically about options trading. You do not want to be just a price chaser. If the stock is surging forward, you want to look at the chart and see if it's hitting those upper end of the level. Let me bring Tesla in the picture here. Hold on. Okay. Another huge winner for us has been over the past two days, um, three days, and, and we also played the earnings. And that I, I teach very well. I mean, these are very exciting trades, reversal trades, we call them. You know, stock falls after earnings. It happened with um, Electronic Arts. This was last week. Uh, this was on February 25th, I believe. Um, stock fell from 90 to 73. It started reversing right off the bat within the first hour. We jumped in. We were long. So we were down on the, on the, on the calls, started buying heavy on the reversal. The stock went up twenty bucks in two day in a, in a day. Wow, talk that's about nice it. Day. Talk, and it was a huge day. The options were up two thousand percent. The four mm -hmm. we paid forty forty five cents for it, and that they were went. They, they, let me let me finish. They went to more than four bucks, 
and and this happens quite a bit in these type of markets so i specialize a lot in what we call distress sales or reversal trades and um and they are huge money makers while the rest of the world is basically just crouching in fear we are we are trading off our charts and reversal trades are just monstrous same thing happened with a company called okta okta um on uh, on friday stock fell from 75 to 70 turned around and again i'm an options trader and i also buy stock that's up that's just me anyone can too so i'll buy a couple hundred shares of the stock or a thousand shares of the stock and as the stock is surging forward uh okta is a uh a cloud provider a cloud management provider they work with apple too the stock was 70 at the lows on friday after it fell from 81 the previous day and ended yeah. the day at 79. now you go wow. figure you make nine points even if you buy 100 shares you have 900 bucks on that and the right. options went and the options went berserk uh the options on okta were so cheap and i had the 80 85 calls they literally went from 15 cents to 60 cents that's four bagger and we play a lot of these cheap ones you can buy a bunch of them and you just run with it and this happens quite a bit uh yeah, go ahead with go ahead with uh, go ahead i'm ready go, to participate yeah go my uh, question, question. Mm -hmm. uh this is a a tax uh question um what are the tax consequences on options is it like uh buying the actual stock or is okay. it like i will futures? answer i will answer the question by starting a disclaimer i'm not your tax advisor okay but yeah, in yeah, answer in answer to your question yes they are just like futures short-term gains are capped as short-term gains one thing I learned on Wall Street a long time ago: you never wanna, you never, wa you never wanna say, "Hey, I don't want to be in that trade because my taxes are going to be higher." You want to kill it, and then you want to do your taxes with a smart tax guy who can basically work it out. But it is tax, and, you know, it is tax. Uh, on a, on a, on a, on a, the, you know, the, the method of the tax is it like uh, buying short actual stuff, or you know, is it something different? It's the same. Short-term capital gains will be taxed at your ordinary income tax rate. Okay. Yep. So if your income tax rate is in the 20% bracket, 25% bracket, higher bracket, 30% bracket, then short-term capital gains will be taxed in that respect. Absolutely. Never made a difference to me because I want to capture the profit and then worry about the taxes later. Okay. Okay. So so let me show you the picture of uh, Tesla here, uh, and we're going to go through this. So here is a chart on Tesla on a we call, this is a daily chart. Okay. Okay. Yes. This is a this is a daily chart. Well, when we look at daily charts, we are talking about swing trading. This is not for this is not for day traders. This is for looking out and saying, okay, where do I see this stock in a week to two weeks? All right, uh, okay. or longer. So on a daily chart, we can clearly see here. You don't know, need to be a technical analyst, uh, uh, analyst on this picture. Is that there is a the only reason I put a dot there? We call it. This, this is called a gap fill. There's a gap here. So bottom line is, yeah. So on the daily chart, you can clearly see that there is some limited upside on the stock. And that limited upside can be here, where the downtrend line is, Yes. right there, which is 310. This is 310. Yes. Have you heard of Citron, the short seller? No. Andrew, Andrew left, okay. He's a very, he's a very powerful guy. And he basically is a short seller. He looks at stocks okay. when they're overvalued, and he'll put out a recommendation. Um, and he's, not, he's, a, he's, a, he's a fund. I mean, he's got, he's got a short selling fund. He's not a, he's not a uh, uh, you know, uh, okay. small time small trader. He shorted Tesla all the way uh, when it when the stock was uh, 400 bucks, whatever. He makes makes money. And here's a guy who comes out, and this is. Well, after I told people to buy the stock off this reversal at around the 270 level, and it said barely move. When you look at this chart, it's only up 14 bucks, and that's a small candle. You know, uh, we can, we can. So he comes out late in the afternoon and he says, We're long Tesla. The stock's going to 320. So uh, here's, a, here's a short seller, and that was, that was part of the reason. Tesla was overall holding out pretty positive because of the Shanghai news and everything which hadn't even come out because CNBC and these financial media outlets, they are complete Tesla haters. So they are constantly barraging the bad news, never ever mentioning the positive development that's going on with them securing financing to build their massive gigafactory in China. 
So that news comes out late in the afternoon. Citron hits the tape. This is well before after we are long Tesla. So bottom line is that uh, these type of moves intraday can generate a very, very decent profit. Just on Friday, it went from 275 back and forth all the way uh, to 285. That's a $10 candle right there, which one yeah. can trade either as a day trader or they say, okay, I'm buying it a week out. I want. I, I believe the stock is going to head towards 298 or even if it goes to 290, even if it goes to 290, uh, yeah. every, do every dollar move on Tesla and the options are not that expensive at all will affect the movement on the underlying options. So we have the 295 calls. I also have the 290 calls and the 295 calls had a range of roughly uh, a, a six, uh, a roughly 60 to 70 percent during the day. Remember, they're way out of the money. In order for it to go to 295, it has to go up here, right there. Mm -hmm. See that? So yeah, yeah, see. on the on the chart, it doesn't look much, but when we are zooming in, as I'll show you, you know, it it, it shows a difference. So the 295 calls, the lows were two dollars and fifty four cents during the day, and the high at the end of the day. Um, or, 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 or close to the end of the day was four dollars and fifty cents. So if you had can bought you it somewhere, in the, let, 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 let me. Yes, you can. Let me just finish my thought. Yes, you can chart options, and I do show options charts quite often, uh, and you can do that on your end too. Is it? It basically went. Let's say you bought it. You know, you didn't catch the two fifty four low print price because it's tough to catch the lowest price. Um, let's say you bought it at three. And it went to four. You just generated 33% money on your profits. Depending on how many calls you bought, you made some real decent money. And then it ended at 450. So that's your longer-term swing chart on Tesla. I don't expect Tesla to go all the way up here. Who knows? It might. I, I don't care about that. All I care about is this zone here, which will generate me two to three hundred percent, if not actually far more than that. If Tesla hits the 310 mark right here. And Andrew Left is saying 320. I don't really care what he's saying or not, but I can see why he's saying 320 because 320 is is where the stock has gone to before and pulled back. See that? And that was the breakdown yeah. level. So it's slightly I above see. 320 actually. It's uh, the, yeah. uh, the this is it. This is, one second, Mike. So this is a gap fill, and that gap fill is basically 327. So mm -hmm. 3 320 being a round number, easy for. You know, an average trade is, oh, 320, you know, 327 is really the gap, the lower gap fill right here. God forbid the stock gets to 326, you will literally make 800% plus on your on your trade. Now, in, for that to happen, you need to have some time in your hand and you need to have the stock moving in the general direction. Uh, there are multiple indicators here that I'm not going to go into right now, which are telling us that that is a good possibility. Um, and both the stochastics, the McLaren oscillators, the volume candles, heavy duty selling, and then the buyers stepped in. But Tesla, mind you, is an extremely volatile stock. Uh, so despite uh, the beauty about this chart and stuff, it can very easily break below 270 on some side of negative news uh, and then hit uh, the, the uh, ultimate bottom, which generally where the stock bounces big time of 240. Now, if it does do a U-turn, what we do as tactical traders, we will exit our positions if it's approaching the 270 level or below 270, uh, uh, below 273. Based on my charts, below this, we will short the stock because we feel that if it breaks the 270 level on high volume, as in this type of uh, this type of uh, large volume candle, quite easy to see. That means big sellers are coming in. Then it is a good chance the stock will very quickly, very quickly come into this zone here and we will go short. So that's one way of doing it. I teach all this stuff on the trade management side. The other way of doing it is you reduce your long exposure. If you have four calls, you bring it down to two. You leave that alone just in case it turns around and jettisons forward, you know, from this bounce level. Um, you, you, you minimize your long exposure and you simultaneously play the short side just in case it breaks. So this way you make money on the shorts, your, your options, will drop in price you will add more let's say you paid four dollars for the stock uh, option and it's down to one now you will you will you you will buy more at this level bring your cost down then the stock basically does one of these moves 
and and you're sitting on a pile of money. So that's called dollar. That's called dollar cost averaging. Okay. Where you, yeah, dollar cost averaging is a very effective strategy in my opinion, because the markets are so volatile. Some people say once you, you know, you you take a forty percent loss, you never look back. That's garbage. The bottom line is that was the old days when things were more linear. As you can clearly see here, these are not linear. These are algorithmic movements, and these are all driven by machines. So as long as we can identify the chart pattern, we're good to go. And uh, so this is a longer term chart. Let's go look into into the shorter term picture of Tesla. So let's look at the uh, fifteen minute chart. So here's your fifteen minute chart on Tesla, uh, and let's. Uh, this is going all the way back to the beginning of the week. The beginning of the week, the stock was at three hundred, right? So, yes. in very simplistic terms, uh, the stock, here's the stock at three hundred. You could play based on based on, and I this is uh, this is, I use three different platforms to show my charts, just so people can understand what they're looking at. Um, one that I use very effectively, and you will see that on my on my Twitter feed, is uh, Warden Two Thousand, which shows you very specific levels. Another one is called Quad, which which I primarily use for my trading. Absolutely beautiful levels it shows on. Um, one second, I'll give you a small example as I'm talking to you. Just bear, bear with me. I'm scrolling through my Twitter feed on the other side. Okay, here we are. This is this is why we do what we do. All right. This is a one-hour chart of Tesla that I showed. You tell me how clear it is as daylight if you if 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 you're trading off these levels. Now to make it extra extra easy for all my members, I even put frigging arrows. All right, and you, as, as you can clearly see, and you'll see this in multiple charts. You know, is is that is that these arrows are engaged repeatedly. So on this front, what we can see here is a is a technical pattern known as a W pattern, a double bottom uh, with a large hammer. Which was off the 270 level when we originally entered the entered the trade. Each of these levels, when they're engaged, you can take profits along the way. Stock went from 1 275, hit my level at 285. Uh, take one contract. Go oh, back. Yeah. yeah, take whatever contract. You can sell the whole lot, you know. And then and then you see the selling come in. Let's say you don't want to short. I don't like shorting Tesla too much because Tesla is such a volatile stock, and there's so many haters out there. That the machines tend to turn it the other way and ramp it like big time. Now, if you see large candles like this, yes, you could be a short on the stock. But shorting Tesla is a dangerous man's game. Is a dangerous game. It's a widow maker. It could just snatch your money away big time because the stock turns around and goes. And it did that on Friday repeatedly. So here was the sixth. Friday was the eighth. Um, and and you can clearly see here how fast it moves. 275, 285. So it's basically in a trading range right now. And that trading range on a short-term basis for us traders is 286, stocks at 284, and this was not at the closing. So the, at the closing, the stock was at 284. So this is the range we're trading the stock at this point and, 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 and scalping the profits. If it breaks above this range, it's going to head straight towards 290, 295, and there is a pattern completion here at 300, in which case this is where the big selling happened. Besides from this, the big uh, the big machine sold uh, what we call Algo HFT, algorithmic high frequency trading machines, like started selling here on the drop. And uh, so 307 is max move. Forget 307. We are looking at these levels here as max upside at this point. And there was a big these are big money makers for us uh, from a tactical standpoint. So this is this is this is, this is, this is I'm sorry. What was that? This is from your Twitter feed. Absolutely, you have to go through my Twitter feed. I just dragged I it. You know, yeah. You, uh, this is all from my Twitter feed. One second. Okay. So this is what my Twitter feed looks like. This is our service. Is probably the ultimate service, and I'm not giving you a marketing pitch. It's a fact. Where you literally have a trading visual or a chart attached to almost every single trade that we're putting out there. 
So you're not just blindly buying a particular uh, uh, alert like you get from other trading servers. Okay, buy Apple at this and that. You're actually getting a visual roadmap in front of you. So as and this is where the training comes in. So the people who sit in for and subscribe to my uh, enroll in my advanced coaching sessions, they know how to read my charts to a high degree of accuracy, and then they can make a determination whether they should bulk in hard and buy that particular call, I mean particular alert, or whether they should just nibble at it. But that messaging comes out of the charts, and one must understand them to a to a reasonable degree of accuracy. Um, this is the S&P 500, for example, um, in order to decide whether or not they're going to make the money. Remember, on it doesn't matter whether the market's crapping 600 points, whether it's sub 600 points. There's always, or in, let's talk about the crashes on the pullbacks. Market's down 400 points. You could always have one or two stocks on my multiple alerts that I put out there, which would zoom the other way, and you would be net profitable for the day. Okay, so these are things that that come along with with the training. These are things come along with your own experience of doing it, and you learn on the job. So here is a chart of the S and P 500. Just giving you a slice of what we do here. I had shown this gap. That's a gap. It's a gap. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. And, uh, and 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 it hit that gap. It. This was your. This line is the 200-day moving average. I mean, I highlight these things to a very high degree of accuracy. So 27.50. We, we held that gap the previous day on Thursday, and then we dropped below that. So there was obviously a flurry of selling because we broke the 200-day moving average, and we hit that gap. And right when we hit that gap, this was the culmination of that by the end of the day. That move alone was good for 300-plus point reversal on the Dow, and on the SPY calls was good for 60, 70, 80, if not more percent on an intraday reversal. Now. Will this with this little green candle shoot all the way up higher? I have no idea. I have a feeling that it's not ready to do that yet. However, do I think it's going to reclaim at least 2750 on the on the uh, on the uh, yeah. uh, try to recapture 20, 2750 on the 200 day moving average? Yes, I do. And that could happen as quickly as Monday morning. And if that's the case, then I will be a seller at the 200 day moving average on my spy calls and my SPX calls. Because at that point there's going to be a flurry of selling that hits the market again, and if it doesn't, then I'm going to remain. I'm going to basically continue forward. But I still believe there is some pressure, downward pressure on the market, as as I'm seeing here on my uh, very very uh, 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 accurate indicator internal, which is known as the slow stochastics. So that's all on my Twitter feed. All right. Yeah, now let's go, uh, let's let's go back to options. So going back to options. You can notice here that each of these moves. This is a this is a, uh, this is a 15-minute chart intraday move. This one from 270 all the way to 284. That's a 14-point move. You can trade them all day long. Now, it, are you going to exactly catch the bottom and the top? Uh, I don't think anyone can. You can catch the like bottoms that. because you start to see a flurry of activity at the bottoms in the form of these candles. We follow these candles very closely because that's billions of dollars going in back and forth. Um, but whether or not that is the exact top, I don't know. Uh, on that particular move for, for about an hour or so, I would rather be a seller and like they say, you know, take the meat in the middle um, and then and look to see what happens. So you could trade these, these, these moves um, which can last anywhere from an hour to two hours um, with smaller amounts of money and uh, and do quite well but that is a that is, that's a that's a 50 now off this chart it's more difficult to trade that off the other chart that i showed you it's easier to trade got it yes, now so they're, they're, now these are these are five minute candles i don't trade off five minute candles because that's nuts you can see I, that, I the, the, yeah and, that. The, and there are traders who do that you know traders trade off three minute candles and because they're scalping real fast I don't particularly like to do that because I like to see some decent profits. And on these five-minute candles, you have no freaking idea whether this candle is going to be like a five-minute up, five-minute down. And I, I, we call them MOHTR. I don't. We we do not want to be monkeys on hot tin roofs. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. Because that that's what retail traders do. You know, it's like monkeys on hot tin roofs. So we don't want to do that. Now, let me show you a that's classic how you example. Lose, that's how you lose money. Um, you lose money or make a little money, and then you're just like you know, you're just giving away big gains for for just jumping around on a five-minute candle. Now, 
Let me give you a real life example of, of trades that were put through. We were long Costco for an earnings trade. Uh, we were long uh, Costco right, for right, right. Okay. So the yeah. we bought the that leads me to my next. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I said that leads me to another question, but yes, go ahead. Okay. So Costco, we were long the earnings. We bought it the day before on on a, a Thursday. We had actually bought it previously here. Then we bought it. Uh, the earnings alert went out on Thursday at around 2 p.m. People paid around two and a half to three bucks. Now earnings co- earnings uh, uh, plays are always 50-50 chance. We tend to buy them in a basket. So I will show five or six different trades. And if you buy one call each, whatever you want to do, then that basket generally has a very high level of ROI, return on investment performance, because you might have one or two that just just go into the uh, a ditch and you, you get two or three or one, even one that goes up gazillion points and you are net net up 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 percent on that basket of, of uh, uh, what we call the ER basket earnings uh, earnings report. So Costco was one example. We had Costco and we had another big one, which was big lots. Both of them were huge winners in excess of 200 percent plus. So Costco, in this case, two and a half, three bucks, the stock went to seven. So right there overnight, you ca- you captured uh, 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 three to seven, 250. So you basically captured uh, 150 percent to 200 percent on your on your uh, uh, net return. So the calls cost uh, the, the calls cost three dollars. You could have sold them anywhere between six and seven dollars. So if you bought two, just giving you a small example, you put in six hundred bucks. You're like, okay, let's play with six hundred bucks. Then six hundred bucks you would be taking out. Uh, two calls would be six hundred. Your net profits. Would be uh, you would be taking out anywhere from twelve hundred to fourteen hundred dollars, literally off the open, like within the first ten minutes of trading. Mm-hmm. Okay, because the gap open. Generally, I tend to sell when a gap open. Look to see how the stock is trading. If it some some of them go higher, but I tend to take take most of my um, exactly. sell that's my the question I have right now. Go ahead. This, yeah, that's my question. Uh, when you see those um, those um, earnings and then they they gap down, um, a, a good example was uh, U.S. Steel. Uh, it um, it gapped down um, on earnings and then if you bought the gap. Um, when was earnings? I didn't play U.S. Steel. So when was earnings? You're talking uh, recently. It was I think January thirty uh, first. Oh, all the way back there. Okay, one second. Yeah. Go ahead, keep talking. Yeah, it gapped down. Yeah, it gapped down to I think about uh, twenty, um, and then if you bought it, it, it popped right back up. January thirtieth. Oh, you mean right here yeah. that day? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. So, so that it would be a case of one second. That would be a classic case of uh, of a ma- of a monster reversal trade. One second. Yes. There. Oops, no, I can't even see that. Um. Yes, absolutely. That would be the case of a monster reversal trade right there. This is the day you're talking about. We didn't play that, so we would know. Yeah. So, um, yes, and then it tend- and then it kind of floated higher. And then see you yes. later right now. Yeah. So, by, uh, yes, so that. Does, so, yeah. Will the option work like that? If, I, if, I, if it gapped down in the morning, and am I able to buy the option, you know, Absolutely. At nine o'clock, or I have to wait till nine thirty, or how does that work? Not nine thirty when the market opens. So I have to wait till nine thirty. Watch the gap down, and then if I want, I I buy that, and then yeah, I will give you an example of uh, um, our biggest example was EA, but I'll give you an example of Okta options. So I should have it. One second, sir. And then the next thing is, can you show me on? Okay, yeah. On let me let platform. me finish, finish. Let me finish my thought. Okay. So here is a classic example of a massive. This is I'm showing you the stock version of it, but the options uh, uh, acted accordingly. Here's Okta. First, it shot up right after earnings. All right. Yes. On uh, on Thursday, it went to 83. Then the stock collapsed. It went to 73. Now look how accurately I charted the whole thing for to help my traders manage the trade so it, this was this was all happening after hours 
Then it hit at the when the mark. This is this is after hours, after four, right? So you have no control on that. Even though I do do after hours trading on individual stocks, you can't trade options after hours. You can trade stocks after hours. So if somebody was trading this after hours till and after hours trading goes on till eight p.m. As you know, uh, they could have scalped a dollar or two, but that's not a day story. So then the stock basically collapsed and opened the following morning at 70. See? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Im so immediately. That's where you buy it. Yeah. One second. You don't just necessarily buy it at 70. You have to watch the, 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 the reversal patterns that we started to see in the form of this, what we call hammer reversals. So we started to see these green, green candles appear right off the bat. Right off the bat. We started diving in. We started diving, we were called all the way through. The stock hit $79. Then yeah, it pulled back, 130, it pulled back to 75. By the end of the day, it was back towards 79. This is a very powerful chart. Now, a couple of things happened. If my charts were telling us to buy, we were killing it on the options, buying it at the lows. But at the same time, late in the day, and that's why there's an old saying on Wall Street that technicals precedes fundamentals, there was a big it was reported that Canaccord Genuity, which is one of the largest investment banks, had upgraded the stock to 85 and said that by 2023, the stock could be a $200 stock. You go figure. And this is not a small investment bank. Hey, I didn't expect that. Doesn't matter. So we like Okta. Uh, with the, uh, and, and we think like looking at the one hour chart here, uh, Okta has a fair shot to hit 81. You can see that here. Where it broke down from 81, oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I would I would be a seller around that level if I see it traverse that and take out this high, which was the high at 11 a.m. on Thursday, um, at 83. Then that means the stock is going back to 86. So in the meantime, we are trading it uh, uh, from its swing tan point. I have some cheap contracts on Okta. Look to see what happens early part of next week. If it hits that 81 level or so, I'll be out. If I see it falling too fast, too quick, I'm out. But in general, this pattern is very bullish. That's known as a bullish engulfing candle. The size of this candle is huge. That means they oh, sucked out. They sucked out all the weak hands right here in this capitulation move. What's a capitulation move? I teach all this stuff on the ACS session. That's a massive volume, 1.9 million shares. Massive red candle. That means they flushed all the weak hands out. Then the big boys came in and the hedge funds came in and massive volume similar to that 1.87. Yeah. And if you add up all these green bars, it's a lot more. They started buying. So when you see a hammer reversal of this pattern, you have to respect it. You have to respect it. That means the worst of the flushing happened already once right after earnings the night before and once right at the open. This pattern yeah. is known as a is known as an inverse head and shoulder, and that's what an inverse head and shoulder looks like. A head and shoulder yeah. pattern is negative, and I will direct you to with my YouTube channel. I have a whole video on chart pattern trading. You have to understand this pattern. That's a negative pattern. That's a positive pattern. It's an also I call it the Texas bullhorn pattern. So bottom line is that uh, this is gen this is showing that we have a good shot to go to 83, and it's possible because of a short squeeze. So what's your question? Because we got to start wrapping up. It's almost 12. Yeah. No. Now, uh, can you show me on your uh, Think or Swim where I would see the um, uh, the, Option. the option section? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show with that. The prices you. and things like that. Yeah. What sec? I have my I have my uh, my thinker swim up too. So just trying to understand it. One sec. I need to bring then this to bring this win right. window down. Hold up. Okay. Why can't I bring this window down? All right, so. Hmm. All products. Ah, uh, this is not it. I have to bring the whole window down, hold on. Okay. There you go, all right, let's make this quick. Uh, this should be pretty easy. So let's look at uh, Apple. We're talking about a basic stock here, right, Apple. You're looking at the strike prices here. It's telling you going all the way back, all the way to 2021. 
So you let's say you want to look to see what's happening. Simple example. Um, you're looking to see, oh, before I go into that, this is where it shows you the implied volatility and all that stuff. All right. I implied volatility showing 20 percent, uh, all this. This is all mumbo jumbo. Uh, but just to give you an idea, don't worry about that right now. But this is where they give you the underlying uh, picture. All right. IV. See? I see. Yeah. Don't don't bother yourself with that right now. 15th March. So we are going to Apple strikes. Oh, the stock is at 173. So you're looking at 175 calls right okay. there. Okay. okay. Wait, wait, 175 where? Right there, strike. Strike, okay, okay, okay. Yep, these are the puts, these are okay. the calls. Let me get my, okay. uh, one second. While you're doing that, let me see if I can get to that section here. Uh, all products, Apple, all products. You have to go to trade. All products, type in the symbol. Okay. Apple, I see it. Underlying uh, trade grid. Just trade the way it shows you. It's, it's, it's the same screen. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to look. I don't have all that shit. What what difficulty are you running into? You go you go to trade, you type in the symbol, and then yeah. you open up the drop box where it says option chain. So why are you running option into the problem? Option trade, but it says weeklies. Doesn't look like yours. You got a whole big thing on there. Mine doesn't have it. Well, yours does what? Hang on, let me just look at yours again. Uh, Option when chain. you when when you drop the option chain, doesn't yes. it give you the strike price, the dates? Uh, not doesn't looking it give like yours. Uh, huh? Let me. Hold Do on. you have? Yeah. Option chain. Okay, let's not click on. Clicked on March 15th, it only has six. Okay, so go up here and hit all. I'm gonna look, one second. Here, go you have six, here. so drop this box and hit all. Hold on, I'm just back on your, on your where, uh, option train six, where is this, where did you say it? Oh, all, okay, just one moment, okay. let me go back to it. Yep, let me just go back there. Strikes four, so I'm gonna click all. Okay, now it looks like yours. Okay. Okay. So, so now, is... so now, now you have this. You scroll down. App, app. Okay. You want to buy the one seventy five calls right there, right okay. there. Hang on, hang on. I'm got to go back to your screen. Yeah. Okay, one seventy five. Yeah, I see you. Yeah. Yeah, thirteen. Uh, forty six. And then how does it? How do you know what? Oh, the bid is forty cents. Is that what it is? What are you looking at? It's 175, 15th March. Where are you coming yeah. with 30 cents? It's, oh, a, sorry, do, it's, it's a dollar. 40. Six. I want dollar you to, 60. I'm, a, I'm a tough coach. I want you to focus. Like, what are you looking at 40 cents for? You got to look at, you know, right there. Dollar six, dollar yeah. nine. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm going to highlight this. So here is where the 175 calls are expiring 15th March, 109, 106. These are the amount of calls that are in existence right now. 14,000 14, were bought. Uh, sorry, the 14,000, uh, 13,078 calls were traded, buying and selling. On That's the volume. So that gives you an indication of how much activity happening there. Open interest is a very important number. That means how many calls are being held at that level. 47,000 roughly are currently yes. in, in play. You can you uh, one of the quickest ways to look to see if they're betting more on the upside or the downside. You look on the downside. Look at the open interest. That's um, that's generally you know somewhat similar. But if you add them up, they're lower than what the upside is. There are multiple. There are forty-seven thousand at 
the 175 strike, which if you buy directly, this is called the spread to sell 106 to buy 109. And um, oh, I see where you saw the 40 cents. The 40 cents was the 177 yeah. and a half. Okay, yeah, yeah, my yeah. Apology. Yeah, so you slipped there. Yeah, I was like, what is he talking about? Now the other yeah, thing yeah. that I like, other thing that I like is there are 32,000 contracts in place right now, which are which are only 15 cents at the 180 level, you know. But yeah, obviously yeah. the dollar value is a lot less because it's only 14 cents. But there are some betters out there. Uh, I'm concentrating on the 175s, and that's um, cost a dollar. And this is so. In order to put the trade in, you 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 go there, you go to yes. that op option chain, follow closely, yeah. you right click. Ah, okay, okay. I that's see, it. Yeah. Buy. Listen carefully. Buy. Look carefully. Okay. Buy. Don't, these are all the different spreads. So forget all that stuff. Single. Yeah. Yes. Order entry, single, buy, one contract, two open, mm -hmm. Apple, 15th March, 175 strike, yeah. call, not a put, call, yeah. Yeah. it automatically generates anyway. Price 109, you can put a limit order, or you can put a market order. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. If you're buying one call, who the hell cares if it's $1.06 or $1.09? You're not going to be a penny pincher no, no. for three, three bucks. Exactly. Yeah, well, yeah. Believe me, tra traders do that. Now, if you buy larger sizes, you want to put a limit. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, limit, day. Don't worry about these. And then you just hit confirm and send. Gotcha. See? Gotcha, gotcha. And then it tells you, so you quickly look at that, and then you just send. Okay. Now, uh, where does it tell you what the value is? It's going to update constantly where the bid and the ask is here? That's on your trade page. Okay. Once you do that, it falls into your position page. And, and in your position update. page, yeah, exactly. That's where it's going to show and you the value. And how do you get out of it? You sell, it, you, you sell it from your position page. You just the same way, you know, you on your position page. Um, one second here. On your position page, you okay. you basically right click and uh, sell. Same way. Hey, look, gotcha. okay. let me ask you a question here. Do you really yeah. trade futures or are you bullshitting me? Well, I, I trade futures on interactive brokers. I don't okay. use uh, Thinkers. Okay, here. okay, think or swim. So let me ask you a question. You still have the same parameters. Buy, sell. You you right course, click yeah. a mouse. So it's I, the same. I, same, I, I, same. I, I trade from the chart though, so it's. You know. Oh, you trade off the chart. Got it. Got it. Okay. So on yeah, the yeah. on the on the sell side, I hear what you're saying. Um, on the sell side, the same way. You are selling one. I got it. Yeah. So I it's selling one. In this case, to close, not to open. So you have to change that. One oh six, and you hit. Confirm and send. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah. yeah. So that's and, and, yeah. and if I'm if I'm buying a stock, then I just enter from the platform. But you know, on interactive brokers. But if I'm yeah, you can you can you can you you can uh, enter of the platform. You can enter directly of this. You can say buy. See, that's buying stock. See. So yeah, any yeah. any anywhere with the symbol, you know, so you're you're good yeah, to go. Yeah. That's correct. Uh, All right. I, 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 I'm clear now with the, with this page. I, I, I never know, knew how to get to this. No, this no page. problem. I want to also tell you that um, Thinkorswim has multiple. They're fantastic um, video tutorials under education. And I highly suggest that you just click in whatever. The Learning Center is just incredible. All right. And they are they really, options, really good. Yeah. So right there, they have options. So you they can, you options, know. Yeah. So three ways yeah, to I use options, trading options, options for beginners. In fact, this is much better than Investopedia because this is the real deal. Okay. Um, trading options, yeah, and sure. read yeah. up on covered calls, all that stuff. All right. So yeah. um, okay. so that that's it for today. What uh, I'll do is sometime during the week, um, first part of the week or so, I'm going to set up a uh, – go through my Twitter feed. I'll set up uh, another session. Uh, this one, like I said, you know, I mean, I'm normally supposed to get this done by an hour. I got stuff to do. It's 12 noon right now. So uh, the thing yeah. is, 
uh, I'll, I'll still give you an extra free hour uh, this coming uh, week after the market. Uh, I'll run down uh, some uh, how how you, how you need to navigate my uh, um, uh, site, which is already. Uh, you, I need you to go to Google YouTube. Very important. Your welcome email yeah. should be should be coming out today. This is my Google YouTube channel. Watch. Okay. Showing okay. you that. Go to Google YouTube. Put it in your email. Okay. You need to subscribe. You know it's free. So this is my okay. channel. This is my channel. There's okay. A, Good evening. We so have you, a uh, great new so member. So there are multiple videos. These are market videos. Don't worry about that right now. Go to the playlist. All right. Yep. Yeah. Go mm -hmm. to the playlist. Go to new member introductory videos. Where is it? New member introductory videos. Okay. All right. So I want you to go through that. There are introductory videos, how to read charts, introductory videos, how to navigate my, uh, my uh, um, how to trade, uh, how to take my trades on the charts, how to navigate my service, which is very simple, which is basically, you know, following the Twitter feed. And everything is under here. So I need you to listen to at least two or three of them and and you're all set you know you're all set okay yes, I will go to that. yep i have a lot of homework here yeah all just right. it's very simple i try to make it simple just the way i i, I uh, on this training session i don't try to make things complicated uh this is not rocket science what the rocket science is your mental calibration where you stand how you manage the trades and how you read the charts reading the charts is a little bit of a learning process but hey you know, if you're going to make big money, then obviously it has to be a little bit of a learning process. We are not scalp traders. We're not looking to give you a dollar or two on something and say, oh, we're geniuses. We're, we're, we're nailing some pretty serious trades. Now, the other thing you need to do, which I asked you to do this morning, did you sign up for Instagram? No. Okay. You got to follow my instructions. If you're going to succeed, you got to follow my instructions. It takes two minutes. Why didn't you do it? Uh, I mean, I, I know yeah. I'm putting you on, on the on the floor, but you should do it. it, it you know, I, you, I mean, I, I didn't do it. I'm, I will. Okay. I will get to let, me, it. let me let me let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Okay. The reason you should subscribe to my Instagram channel immediately. You get to see these frigging options charts that you're licking your chops over because you you want to make uh, money off options. All right. And if you're making here. this type of money off options, which are, these are real trades, okay, that I highlight for promotional marketing purposes. Uh, in between pictures of our one of our six pets uh, is uh, and, and our cars uh, is the, is the fact that this is what this is what it's all about. This is why you join my service. You want to basically trade some options, learn a little bit more about the market, but you want to trade some options. That this is what the actual results are put in place. Electronic cards, three hundred forty percent. These are physical options charts directly off my iPhone or off my desktop computers. Okay. okay. And uh, it's, easier right. to, it's easier to Instagram. post off the iPhone, right? Instagram is mobile, so that's why I do it. So uh, so this is my Instagram channel, Clueless Say Trading, you know? Uh, uh, and uh, I want you to tell all your friends and colleagues, like whoever's out there, I'm that serious, because we want to bring up this follower count. 451 followers, pretty damn good, given that it's only a few months old. Um, and we want to bring it up to thousands of followers. And it doesn't cost a penny. Just go to sign up on Instagram and click Clueless Aid Trading and hit follow. Tell everybody to follow. Give us like 10, 20, 15 members. I'm sure you know some people, you know, who just for the heck of it want to see this and say, oh, wow, look at this. Uh, this is free. It's not a real time content. It is I highlight. I basically take a couple of our big, big trades and I put them there at the end of the evening. OK, but you for a quick, quick check aside from the Twitter feed, I don't always put options charts on Twitter feeds. All right. Uh, so you you, okay. you need to. Yeah, because I don't have that much time to give you real time options charts. I'll show a bunch of them, you know, uh, you know, for for 70 bucks a month. I'm, I'm not going to be you know, I, I'm not going to be uh, doing two thousand dollars a month type of job. So all this is on the Instagram at the end of the day. Okay. So you. Yes. Right. But this yeah. I repeat again, people always don't don't always get it. This is not real time. I'm not posting the trades real time. I'm showing you what we have done during the day. OK, so that's why you need to follow the Instagram. So give you another example. This was big lots position I had. This is off my iPhone. Big lots. 15th March, 32 and a half calls. The calls went from a buck and a half, two bucks to almost five. This is big lots. OK, gotcha. here is another okay. one. Here's another one. One second. Electronic arts intraday Thursday from Thursday to Friday. They went from about a dollar less than a dollar to three and a half dollars 
Okay, and just to be clear, these are um, these suggestions are on your um, Twitter yeah. feed or on the Instagram. I repeat again. This is why I said this six times. Listen carefully. This is when I'm going to bring the hammer down on you, Mike. I repeat it three times. Instagram is not a real-time content delivery system. Do you understand? Just say yes or no. I understand. I do that. not. Well, if I I don't post my hard, precious trades on Instagram on a real-time basis. Everything real-time. Listen carefully. I've said it about six times now. Instagram is there to highlight the trades that we have done, and I post them at the end of the day on Instagram. So on a quick one-minute basis, you can look at what we did at the end of the day, some of the highlighted trades. All my real-time content, my alerts, my charts, my market comments are only on the real-time Twitter feed. I want you to Clear. understand that. Clear. I just wrote it down. Exactly. It, this is not rocket science. You know what I tell my traders, Mike? We're not dealing with SpaceX. We're not building rockets that go to the moon, drop a person off, and 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 bring come back to Earth and have a beer. Okay? I, We're talking I, about simple common sense stuff. If you have common sense, which I'm sure you do, sir, all right, you will be successful. So this is nothing to write down. Real-time Twitter feed is where all the real-time content is delivered for paid members. That's why it's a private Twitter feed. The Instagram, you have to follow because you will see at the end of the day some of these charts and stuff that are not, you know, that uh, that that we did. But yes, the suggestions to buy them and sell them are on the real-time Twitter feed. All right? So you got to follow it and get a whole bunch of people to follow it. Too. I can hear you. What? I will review your YouTube channel as well. Yeah, well, that's for your own benefit. Okay, so listen, I spend a lot of time with you here, almost two hours, yes. and uh, we yes. will. I will still give you an extra hour after that. If you really want to move on, you need to sign up for the advanced coaching sessions. We have quite a full house, uh, and I, I need. I, I have a tight schedule on that. So if you would like to do it, I'm just going to show you where you can do it. Uh, you okay. simply go. You simply go to my website. Um, Oh, I need to I need to see if I can get you logged in there. But anyway, once you're logged in, this is my website. Um, yes. and, and you go to members content. It says members area. So here, here's my website. This is what it looks like. Clue to say training. Members yes. content, members area. Yeah, you already know that because you signed up through it, right? So I tried to sign up for it, but I don't know if I'm uh, registered. So you'd have to check that. I emailed I, you. I will. I will. I know. I will check that uh, and do that. And once you go to members area, there's a link here. See, group coaching yes. sessions. Yeah, I want to put in one uh, uh, word: the reality of this thing here. There are lots of training services. Everyone has their own strength, but nobody does it the way we do it. We are extremely disciplined. We're extremely chart orientated, and the charts are very, very specific. The sessions, if you take it out of place instead, they'll cost you thousands of dollars. I charge, I think, 60 bucks a session. And this is these the private sessions are 99 bucks a pop. Somebody wants to do a private session, fine with me. Uh, but generally, people sign up for the group sessions. They cost $300. Uh, what I would suggest to you directly, the schedule is pretty tight. So if you're serious about moving forward, um, then just sign up. You click that and you sign up on that. Um, and so at least we have you on the schedule and uh, this way, you, you know, um, uh, you can we can be flexible with the timings. So I generally do it on Saturday morning, but sometimes I do it at the end of the market day um, after after 4 p.m. And, and so this is where the link is. You go when you, when you if you go to my site, go to members content, members area, um, click here, advanced coaching sessions. And it uh, mm -hmm. and you and you just basically sign it. This is what it looks like. Sure. Well, I, I, my biggest uh, my biggest issue is um, you know we might you know the market might rally a little bit here and then um, I don't want to watch my, my, my I don't want to watch my portfolio drop uh, thirty forty thousand again. So. Yeah, I I totally understand that. Let me just put it: uh, market might rally. You mean pull back? Well, we yeah. might bounce a little bit more, you know, higher, I, but I, I think I, we're going to come back down. Exactly. So that's for that's exactly no one not actually one of my key um,
comments to everybody is we don't know shit. We don't. Okay. And the fact is your opinion, my opinion, it doesn't matter. So I follow my charts very, very closely. People have been saying the market's going to drop since December 24th. They have, when the markets rallied into January, they said, oh, it's all over. When the markets rallied into February, they said it's all over. Now the markets are hitting a major resistance level that I showed repeatedly from way back. There is a minor pullback. Whether the market bounces from here and goes to with 2,900 again, we don't know. That's why I follow my charts. But it's good to have your own opinion and you mix it in with uh, what, what I'm showing out there and you're in a good you're in a good place. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I exactly. My yeah. biggest issue is I, I don't want to see, you know, 40,000 disappear, you know. I know. You know. So that's that's what I'm saying. When it comes to heavy duty protection and the covered call and stuff, I have to be honest with you, you need to sign up for the ACS sessions. I cannot do it on these free sessions. All right. Okay. So just, just yeah. letting you know, because this okay. way, this way I can walk you through. Now, these are private numbers. If you want to discuss with me, remember, I'm not your financial advisor. I'm not your guidance counselor. I'm simply going to suggest things that could protect you. Uh, and as you said, that's your main concern. Uh, so uh, you might. Uh, so definitely sign up for uh, for 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 uh, the group session uh, and I will uh, throw in. Uh, for your benefit, I will throw in a private session where you can discuss some of your personal stuff, uh, even though you only paid for the group session. So that's it. That's it. That's a uh, complimentary thing I'll throw in for you because I, I realize you don't want to talk about your uh, how many shares of uh, Bank of America or Exxon you have in front of a group session. So I fully exactly. respect yeah, that. Yeah. I don't want that. I mean, I have a lot of other things too. You know, I don't want to okay. be. I know. So so that that's what I'm saying. I'm doing you a favor. You can sign up for the group session and I'll throw in a complimentary session other aside from that if you really want to you know talk about stuff uh, 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 thing then you can si always sign up for the discounted uh, private sessions it's all up to you so that's all yeah. on the website now in order for you to get to the website I have to fix your I have to create yeah, your yeah. account so I yeah, will create yeah. the, I will create the account today and then I will send you a text via Twitter so just uh, and at that point you will attempt to sign back in fair enough fair enough thank you sir no problem, Mike. Listen, good talking to you. I look forward to working with you. Uh, and that's it for now. We're signing off. Yeah. All right. Have Same a good here. one. Yes. And you by too. the way, bye -bye. Where, where, are you, where are you right now? In Manila or Hong Kong? I am in Manila. I'll be in Hong Kong next week. I'll be back in New York. Uh, Jay, I'm going to LaGuardia, actually, on uh, March 31st. And then I'll be in New York for about a week. And then I'm going up to uh, my place in um, Vermont. And, nice. Uh, well, when you're in New York and stuff, you know, of course, we'll be in touch. You know, maybe we can meet for a beer or something, you know. So, um, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that sounds yeah, I'll good. Be, I'll be in Westchester County. Yeah. Yep, not a problem, sir. All right. So I will uh, I will set up first things first. You'll do your stuff on the, your end. Uh, I will go ahead and uh, create an account for you. If I have any issues, just keep an eye on the Twitter feed because that's the fastest method of communication between you and me. And if I need anything from you, I'll just send it on the Twitter feed. Once I create that... Um, once I create your account and you have access to the website, then sign up for that ACS and we'll go forward from there. All right? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Have a good one.